Narrated by Asma. The Prophet peace be upon him said, I will be at my lake fount, Kothar, waiting for whoever will come to me. Then some people will be taken away from me whereupon I will say, My followers. It will be said, You do not know they turned apostates as renegades, deserted their religion. Ibn Abu Malaika said, Allah, we seek refuge with you from turning on our heels from the Islamic religion and from being put to trial. Narrated by Abdullah The Prophet peace be upon him said, I am your predecessor at the lake fount, Kothar, and some men amongst you will be brought to me, and when I will try to hand them some water, they will be pulled away from me by force whereupon I will say, O Lord, my companions. Then the Almighty will say, You do not know what they did after you left, they introduced new things into the religion after you. Narrated by Saul bin Sad. I heard the Prophet peace be upon him saying, I am your predecessor at the lake fount, Kothar, and whoever will come to it, will drink from it, and whoever will drink from it, will never become thirsty after that. There will come to me some people whom I know and they know me, and then a barrier will be set up between me and them. Abu Sa'id al-Qudri added that the Prophet peace be upon him further said, I will say those people are from me. It will be said, you do not know what changes and new things they did after you. Then I will say, far removed, from mercy, far removed, from mercy, those who changed the religion after me. Narrated by Abdullah. Allah's Messenger peace be upon him say to us, you will see after me, selfishness, on the part of other people, and other matters that you will disapprove of. They asked, What do you order us to do, O Allah's Messenger peace be upon him? Under such circumstances. He said, Pay their rights to them, to the rulers, and ask your right from Allah. Narrated by Ibn Abbas. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Whoever disapproves of something done by his ruler then he should be patient, for whoever disobeys the ruler even a little, little equals a span, will die as those who died in the pre-Islamic period of ignorance. Means as rebellious sinners. Narrated by Ibn Abbas. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Whoever notices something which he dislikes done by his ruler, then he should be patient, for whoever becomes separate from the company of the Muslims even for a span and then dies, he will die as those who died in the pre-Islamic period of ignorance, as rebellious sinners. Narrated by Junada bin Abu Umayyah We entered upon Ubaidah bin As summit while he was sick. We said, May Allah make you healthy. Will you tell us a hadith you heard from the Prophet peace be upon him and by which Allah may make you benefit? He said, the Prophet peace be upon him called us and we gave him the Pledge of Allegiance for Islam, and among the conditions on which he took the pledge from us, was that we were to listen and obey, the orders, both at the time when we were active and at the time when we were tired, and at our difficult time and at our ease, and to be obedient to the ruler and give him his right even if he did not give us our right, and not to fight against him unless we noticed him having open kafir disbelief, for which, we would have a proof with us from Allah. Narrated by Uzaid bin Hudair. A man came to the Prophet peace be upon him and said, O Allah's Messenger peace be upon him. You appointed such and such person and you did not appoint me. The Prophet peace be upon him said, After me you will see rulers not giving you your right, but you should give them their right, and be patient till you meet me. Narrated by Abu Huraira. I heard the truthful and trusted by Allah, means the Prophet peace be upon him, saying, the destruction of my followers will be through the hands of young men from Quraysh. Narrated by Zainab bint Yashir. The Prophet peace be upon him got up from his sleep with a flushed red face and said, none has the right to be worshipped but Allah. 
Woe to the Arabs, from the great evil that is nearly approaching them. Today a gap has been made in the wall of Gog and Magog like this. Sufian illustrated by this forming the number 90 or 100 with his fingers. It was asked, Shall we be destroyed though there are righteous people among us? The prophet peace be upon him said, Yes, if evil increased. Narrated by Usama bin Zaid. Once the prophet peace be upon him stood over one of the high buildings of Medina and then said, to the people, do you see what I see? They said, no. He said, I see afflictions falling among your houses as raindrops fall. Narrated by Abu Huraira. The prophet peace be upon him said, time will pass rapidly, good deeds will decrease, miserliness will be thrown, in the hearts of the people, afflictions will appear and there will be much al -harjay. They said, O Allah's Apostle. What is al -harjay? He said, Killing. Killing. Narrated by Abdullah and Abu Musa. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Near the establishment of the hour there will be days during which religious ignorance will spread, knowledge will be taken away, vanish, and there will be much al -harjay, and al harjay means killing. Narrated by Abu Musa. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Near the establishment of the hour there will be days during which religious knowledge will be taken away, vanish, and general ignorance will spread, and there will be al harjay in abundance, and al harjay means killing. Narrated Abu Musa. The Prophet peace be upon him said, As above, Hadith 7064. And Harje, in the Ethiopian language, means killing. Narrated by Abdullah. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Near the establishment of the hour, there will be the days of al Harje, and the religious knowledge will be taken away, vanish, means by the death of religious scholars, and general ignorance will spread. Abu Musa said, al harje in the Ethiopian language, means killing. Ibn Masud added, I heard Allah's messenger peace be upon him saying, it will be, from among the most wicked people who will be living at the time when the hour will be established. Narrated by az Zubair bin Adi. We went to Anas bin Malik and complained about the wrong we were suffering at the hand of al Hajjaj. Anas bin Malik said, Be patient till you meet your Lord, for no time will come upon you but the time following it will be worse than it. I heard that from the Prophet. Narrated by Um Salama. The wife of the Prophet. Allah's messenger peace be upon him woke up one night in a state of terror and said, Subhan Allah. How many treasures Allah has sent down? And how many afflictions have been sent down? Who will go and wake the lady dwellers, wives of the Prophet, up of these rooms, for prayers? He meant his wives, so that they might pray. He added, A well dressed soul in this world may be naked in the hereafter. Narrated by Abdullah bin Umar. Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, said, Whoever takes up arms against us, is not from us. Narrated by Abu Musa. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Whoever takes up arms against us, is not from us. Narrated by Abu Huraira. The Prophet peace be upon him said, None of you should point out towards his Muslim brother with a weapon, for he does not know, Satan may tempt him to hit him and thus he would fall into a pit of fire hell. Narrated by Sufiyan. I said to Amor, O Abu Muhammad. Did you hear Jabir bin Abdullah saying, A man carrying arrows passed through the mosque and Allah's messenger peace be upon him said to him, Hold the arrows by their heads. Amor replied, Yes. Narrated by Jabir. A man passed through the mosque and he was carrying arrows, the heads of which were exposed, protruding. 
the man was ordered, by the prophet, to hold the iron head so that it might not scratch, injure, any Muslim. Narrated by Abu Musa. The prophet peace be upon him said, if any one of you passed through our mosque or through our market while carrying arrows, he should hold the iron heads, or said. He should hold their heads firmly with his hand lest he should injure one of the Muslims with it. Narrated by Abdullah The Prophet, said, abusing a Muslim is fusak, evil doing, and killing him is kafir, disbelief. Narrated by Ibn Umar I heard the Prophet peace be upon him saying, do not revert to disbelief after me by striking, cutting, the necks of one another. Narrated by Abu Bakra Allah's Messenger peace be upon him addressed the people saying, don't you know what is the day today? They replied, Allah and his Apostle know better. We thought that he might give that day another name. The Prophet said, Isn't it the day of an Nair? We replied, Yes. O oh Allah's Messenger peace be upon him. He then said, What town is this? Isn't it the forbidden sacred town Mecca? We replied, Yes. O oh Allah's Messenger peace be upon him. He then said, Your blood, your properties, your honors, and your skins, means bodies are as sacred to one another like the sanctity of this day of yours in this month of yours in this town of yours. Listen, haven't I conveyed Allah's message to you? We replied, Yes he said, O oh Allah. Be witness for it. So it is incumbent upon those who are present to convey it, this message of mine to those who are absent because the informed one might comprehend what I have said better than the present audience who will convey it to him. The narrator added, in fact, it was like that. The prophet peace be upon him added, beware. Do not renegade as disbelievers after me by striking cutting the necks of one another. Narrated by Ibn Abbas. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Beware. Do not renegade as, disbelievers, after me by striking, cutting, the necks of one another. Narrated by Jarir. The Prophet peace be upon him said to me during Hajjat al -Wada, Let the people keep quiet and listen. Then he said, addressing the people, Beware. Do not renegade as disbelievers after me by striking, cutting, the necks of one another. Narrated by Abu Huraira Allah's Messenger peace be upon him Zaid, there will be afflictions, in the near future, during which a sitting person will be better than a standing one, and the standing one will be better than the walking one, and the walking one will be better than the running one, and whoever will expose himself to these afflictions, they will destroy him. So whoever can find a place of protection or refuge from them, should take shelter in it. Narrated by Abu Huraira Allah's Messenger peace be upon him said, There will be afflictions, in the near future, during which a sitting person will be better than a standing one, and the standing one will be better than a walking one, and the walking one will be better than a running one, and whoever will expose himself to these afflictions, they will destroy him. So whoever can find a place of protection or refuge from them, should take shelter in it. Narrated by Al-Hasan al anaf said, I went out carrying my arms during the nights of the affliction, means the war between Ali and Aisha, and Abu Bakr met me and asked, Where are you going? I replied, I intend to help the cousin of Allah's messenger peace be upon him, means Ali. Abu Bakr said, Allah's messenger peace be upon him said, If two Muslims take out their swords to fight each other, then both of them will be from amongst the people of the hell fire. It was said to the Prophet, It is all right for the killer but what about the killed one? He replied, The killed one had the intention to kill his opponent. Narrated by Alanov. Abu Bakr said, 
the Prophet peace be upon him said, as above. Narrated by Hud Haifa bin al Yaman. The people used to ask Allah's Messenger peace be upon him about the good, but I used to ask him about the evil lest I should be overtaken by them. So I said, O oh Allah's Messenger peace be upon him. We were living in ignorance and in an extremely worst atmosphere, then Allah brought to us this good, means Islam, will there be any evil after this good? He said, Yes. I said, Will there be any good after that evil? He replied, Yes, but it will be tainted not pure. I asked, What will be its taint? He replied, There will be, some people who will guide others not according to my tradition? You will approve of some of their deeds and disapprove of some others. I asked, Will there be any evil after that good? He replied, Yes, there will be, some people calling at the gates of the hell fire, and whoever will respond to their call, will be thrown by them into the hell fire. I said, O Allah's Apostle! Will you describe them to us? He said, They will be from our own people and will speak our language. I said, What do you order me to do if such a state should take place in my life? He said, Stick to the group of Muslims and their Imam ruler. I said, If there is neither a group of Muslims nor an Imam ruler. He said, then turn away from all those sects even if you were to bite eat the roots of a tree till death overtakes you while you are in that state. Narrated by Abu al-Aswad An army unit was being recruited from the people of Medina and my name was written among them. Then I met Ikrimah, and when I informed him about it, he discouraged me very strongly and said, Ibn Abbas told me that there were some Muslims who were with the pagans to increase their number against Allah's messenger peace be upon him, and the Muslim army, so arrows, from the Muslim army, would hit one of them and kill him or a Muslim would strike him, with his sword, and kill him. So Allah revealed, verily. As for those whom the angels take in death while they are wronging themselves by staying among the disbelievers. Surah 4 verse 97 Narrated by Hud Haifa Allah's Messenger peace be upon him related to us, two prophetic narrations one of which I have seen fulfilled and I am waiting for the fulfillment of the other. The Prophet peace be upon him told us that the virtue of honesty descended in the roots of men's hearts, from Allah, and then they learned it from the Quran and then they learned it from the Sunnah, the Prophet's traditions. The Prophet peace be upon him further told us how that honesty will be taken away, he said, man will go to sleep during which honesty will be taken away from his heart and only its trace will remain in his heart like the trace of a dark spot, then man will go to sleep, during which honesty will decrease further still, so that its trace will resemble the trace of blister as when an ember is dropped on one's foot which would make it swell, and one would see it swollen but there would be nothing. Inside. People would be carrying out their trade but hardly will there be a trustworthy person. It will be said, in such and such tribe there is an honest man, and later it will be said about some man, what a wise, polite, and strong man he is though he will not have faith equal even to a mustard seed in his heart. No doubt, there came upon me a time when I did not mind dealing, bargaining, with any one of you, for if he was a Muslim his Islam would compel him to pay me what is due to me, and if he was a Christian, the Muslim official would compel him to pay me what is due to me, but today I do not deal except with such and such person. Narrated by Salama bin Alakwe that he visited al hajjaj bin Yusuf. al hajjaj said, O son of al -Akway, You have turned on your heels, means deserted Islam, by staying, in the desert, with the Bedouins. Salama replied, No, but Allah's messenger peace be upon him allowed me to stay with the Bedouin in the desert. Narrated Yazid bin Abu Ubaid, when Uthman bin Affan was killed, martyred, 
Salama bin Alakwe went out to a place called ar and married there and begot children, and he stayed there till a few nights before his death when he came to Medina. Narrated by Abu Sa'id al-Qudri Allah's Messenger peace be upon him said, There will come a time when the best property of a Muslim will be sheep which he will take to the tops of mountains, and the places of rainfall so as to flee with his religion from the afflictions. Narrated by Anas The people started asking the Prophet peace be upon him too many questions importunately. So one day he ascended the pulpit and said, You will not ask me any question but I will explain it to you. I looked right and left, and behold, every man was covering his head with his garment and weeping. Then got up a man who, whenever quarreling with somebody, used to be accused of not being the son of his father. He said, O oh Allah's messenger peace be upon him. Who is my father? The prophet peace be upon him replied, Your father is Hud Haifa. Then Umar got up and said, We accept Allah as our Lord, Islam as our religion and Muhammad as our apostle and we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of afflictions. The prophet peace be upon him said, I have never seen the good and bad like on this day. No doubt, paradise and hell was displayed in front of me till I saw them in front of that wall, Katata said, this hadith used to be mentioned as an explanation of this verse O you who believe. Ask not questions about things which, if made plain to you, may cause you trouble. Surah 5 verse 101 the the above hadith was narrated by Anas through another chain and said, with the wording, and every man had his head wrapped in his garment and weeping. And he said, with the wording, seeking refuge with Allah from the evil of afflictions or he said I seek refuge with Allah from the evil of afflictions. Narrated by Anas the above hadith is narrated on the authority of Anas Tharap another chain and he said, with the wording, seeking refuge with Allah from the evil of afflictions. Narrated Salim's father. The Prophet peace be upon him stood up beside the pulpit, and pointed with his finger towards the east, and said, afflictions are there. Afflictions are there, from where the side of the head of Satan comes out, or said, the side of the Sunday. Narrated by Ibn Umar. I heard Allah's messenger peace be upon him while he was facing the east, saying, Verily. Afflictions are there, from where the side of the head of Satan comes out. Narrated by Ibn Umar. The prophet peace be upon him said, O Allah. Bestow your blessings on our sham. O Allah. Bestow your blessings on our Yemen. The people said, and also on our Najd. He said, O oh Allah. Bestow your blessings on our Sham, North. O oh Allah. Bestow your blessings on our Yemen. The people said, O oh Allah's Apostle. And also on our Najd. I think the third time the Prophet peace be upon him said, There, in Najd is the place of earthquakes and afflictions and from there comes out the side of the head of Satan. Narrated by Saeed ben Jubair. Abdullah ben Umar came to us and we hoped that he would narrate to us a good hadith. But before we asked him, a man got up and said to him, O Abu Abdur Rahman, narrate to us about the battles during the time of the afflictions, as Allah says, and fight them until there is no more afflictions, means no more worshipping of others besides Allah, Surah 2 verse 193. Ibn Umar said, to the man, do you know what is meant by afflictions? Let your mother bereave you. Muhammad used to fight against the pagans, for a Muslim was put to trial in his religion, the pagans will either kill him or chain him as a captive. His fighting was not like your fighting which is carried on for the sake of ruling. Narrated by Shaykhik. I heard Hud Haifa saying, while we were sitting with Umar, he said, 
who among you remembers the statement of the prophet peace be upon him about the afflictions. Hud Haifa said, the affliction of a man in his family, his property, his children, and his neighbors are expiated by his prayers, zakat, and alms, and enjoining good and forbidding evil Umar said, I do not ask you about these afflictions, but about those afflictions which will move like the waves of the sea. Hud Haifa said, Don't worry about it, O chief of the believers, for there is a closed door between you and them Umar said, Will that door be broken or opened? I said, No it will be broken Umar said, Then it will never be closed, I said, Yes. We asked Hud Haifa, Did Umar know what that door meant? He replied, Yes, as I know that there will be night before tomorrow morning, that is because I narrated to him a true narration free from errors. We dared not ask Hud Haifa as to whom the door represented so we ordered Masruk to ask him what does the door stand for? He replied, Umar. Narrated by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. The Prophet peace be upon him went out to one of the gardens of Medina for some business and I went out to follow him. When he entered the garden, I sat at its gate and said to myself, Today I will be the gatekeeper of the Prophet though he has not ordered me. The Prophet peace be upon him went and finished his need and went to sit on the constructed edge of the well and uncovered his legs and hung them in the well. In the meantime Abu Bakr came and asked permission to enter. I said, to him, wait till I get you permission. Abu Bakr waited outside and I went to the Prophet peace be upon him and said, O oh Allah's Prophet. Abu Bakr asks your permission to enter. He said, admit him, and give him the glad tidings of entering paradise. So Abu Bakr entered and sat on the right side of the Prophet peace be upon him and uncovered his legs and hung them in the well. Then Umar came and I said, to him, wait till I get you permission. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Admit him and give him the glad tidings of entering paradise. So Umar entered and sat on the left side of the Prophet and uncovered his legs and hung them in the well so that one side of the well became fully occupied and there remained no place for anyone to sit. Then Uthman came and I said, To him, Wait till I get permission for you. The Prophet peace be upon him said, admit him and give him the glad tidings of entering paradise with the calamity which will befall him. When he entered, he could not find any place to sit with them so he went to the other edge of the well opposite them and uncovered his legs and hung them in the well. I wished that a brother of mine would come, so I invoked Allah for his coming. Ibn al-Muzayyib said, I interpreted that narration as indicating their graves. The first three are together and the grave of Uthman is separate from theirs. Narrated by Abu Wail. Someone said to Usama, Will you not talk to this, Uthman? Usama said, I talked to him, secretly, without being the first man to open an evil door. I will never tell a ruler who rules over two men or more that he is good after I heard Allah's messenger peace be upon him saying, a man will be brought and put in hell fire, and he will circumambulate, go around and round, in hell fire like a donkey of a flour grinding mill, and all the people of hell fire will gather around him and will say to him, Oh so and so. Didn't you used to order others for good and forbid them from evil? That man will say, I used to order others to do good but I myself never used to do it, and I used to forbid others from evil while I myself used to do evil. Narrated by Abu Bakra During the battle of Al-Jamal, Allah benefited me with the word, I heard from the Prophet. When the Prophet heard the news that the people of the Persia had made the daughter of Khosrau their queen, ruler, he said, Never will succeed such a nation as makes a woman their ruler. Narrated by Abu Maryam Abdullah bin Ziyad al asadi when Talha, Az-Zubair, and Aisha moved to Basra, Ali sent Amr bin Yasir and Hassan bin Ali who came to us at Kufa and ascended the pulpit. Al-Hassan bin Ali was at the top of the pulpit and Amr was below Al-Hassan. We all gathered before him. 
I heard Amr saying, Aisha has moved to al-Busra. By Allah. She is the wife of your prophet in this world and in the hereafter. But Allah has put you to test whether you obey him Allah or her, Aisha. Narrated by Abu Wail. Amr stood on the pulpit at Kufa and mentioned Aisha and her coming, to Basra, and said, She is the wife of your prophet in this world and in the hereafter, but you people are being put to test in this issue. Narrated by Abu Wail. Abu Musa and Abi Masood went to Amr when Ali had sent him to Kufa to exhort them to fight, on Ali's side. They said to him, Since you have become a Muslim, we have never seen you doing a deed more criticizable to us than your haste in this matter Emmer said, since you both became Muslims, I have never seen you doing a deed more criticizable to me than your keeping away from this matter. Then Abu Masood provided Amr and Abu Musa with two piece outfits to wear, and one of them went to the mosque, of Kufa. Narrated by Sheikh bin Salama. I was sitting with Abu Masood and Abu Musa and Amr. Abu Masood said, to Amr, there is none of your companions but, if I wish, I could find fault with him except with you. Since you joined the company of the Prophet peace be upon him I have never seen anything done by you more criticizable by me than your haste in this issue Amr said, O oh Abu Masood. I have never seen anything done by you or by this companion of yours, means Abu Musa, more criticizable by me than your keeping away from this issue since the time you both joined the company of the Prophet. Then Abu Masood who was a rich man, said, to his servant, Oh boy! Bring two suits. Then he gave one to Abu Musa and the other to Amr and said, to them, put on these suits before going for the Friday prayer. Narrated by Ibn Umar. Allah's Messenger peace be upon him said, If Allah sends punishment upon a nation, then it befalls upon the whole population indiscriminately, and then they will be resurrected, and judged, according to their deeds. Narrated by Al-Hasan al-Basri. When Al-Hasan bin Ali moved with army units against Muawiyah, Amor bin Al-As said to Muawiyah, I see an army that will not retreat unless and until the opposing army retreats. Muawiyah said, If the Muslims are killed, who will look after their children? Amor bin Al-As said, I, will look after them. On that, Abdullah bin Amir and Abdur Rahman bin Samara said, Let us meet Muawiyah and suggest peace. Al-Hasan al-Basri added, No doubt, I heard that Abu Bakr said, once while the Prophet was addressing, the people, Al-Hasan, bin Ali, came and the Prophet peace be upon him said, This son of mine is a chief, and Allah may make peace between two groups of Muslims through him. Narrated by Harmala. Usama's Mala, Usama, bin Zaid, sent me to Ali, at Kufa, and said, Ali will ask you, what has prevented your companion from joining me? You then should say to him, If you Ali were in the mouth of a lion, I would like to be with you, but in this matter I won't take any part. Harmala added, Ali didn't give me anything, when I conveyed the message to him, so I went to Hassan, Hussein, and Ibn Jafar and they loaded my camels with much wealth. Narrated by Nafi when the people of Medina dethroned Yazid bin Muawiyah, Ibn Umar gathered his special friends and children and said, I heard the Prophet peace be upon him saying, A flag will be fixed for every betrayer on the day of resurrection, and we have given the oath of allegiance to this person, Yazid, in accordance with the conditions enjoined by Allah and his Apostle and I do not know of anything more faithless than fighting a person who has been given the oath of allegiance in accordance with the conditions enjoined by Allah and his Apostle, and if ever I learn that any person among you has agreed to dethrone Yazid, by giving the oath of allegiance, to somebody else, then there will be separation between him and me. 
Narrated by Abu al Minhal. When Ibn Ziyad and Marwan were in Sham and Ibn Az Zubair took over the authority in Mecca and Kura, the Kurajites, revolted in Basra, I went out with my father to Abu Barza al Islami till we entered upon him in his house, while he was sitting in the shade of a room built of cane. So we sat with him and my father started talking to him saying, O oh Abu Barza, don't you see in what dilemma the people has fallen? The first thing heard him saying I seek reward from Allah for myself because of being angry and scornful at the Quraysh tribe. O oh you Arabs! You know very well that you were in misery and were few in number and misguided, and that Allah has brought you out of all that with Islam and with Muhammad till he brought you to the state, of prosperity and happiness, which you see now, and it is this worldly wealth and pleasures which has caused mischief to appear among you. The one who is in sham, means Marwan, by Allah, is not fighting except for the sake of worldly gain, and those who are among you, by Allah, are not fighting except for the sake of worldly gain, and that one who is in Mecca, means Ibn Az Zubair, by Allah, is not fighting except for the sake of worldly gain. Narrated by Abi Way. Hud Haifa bin al Yaman said, The hypocrites of today are worse than those of the lifetime of the Prophet, because in those days they used to do evil deeds secretly, but today they do such deeds openly. Narrated by Abi Ashishat. Hud Haifa said, In fact, it was hypocrisy that existed in the lifetime of the Prophet, peace be upon him, but today it is kafir, disbelief, after belief. Narrated by Abu Huraira. The Prophet peace be upon him said, The hour will not be established till a man passes by a grave of somebody and says, Would that I were in his place. Narrated by Abu Huraira. Allah's Messenger peace be upon him said, the hour will not be established till the buttocks of the women of the tribe of Das move while going round Di Alkalasa. Di Alkalasa was the idol of the Das tribe which they used to worship in the pre-Islamic period of ignorance. Narrated by Abu Huraira. Allah's messenger peace be upon him said, The hour will not be established till a man from cotton appears, driving the people with his stick. Narrated by Abu Huraira. Allah's Messenger peace be upon him said, The hour will not be established till a fire will come out of the land of Hijaz, and it will throw light on the necks of the camels at Basra. Narrated by Abu Huraira. Allah's Messenger peace be upon him said, Soon the river Euphrates will disclose the treasure, the mountain, of gold, so whoever will be present at that time should not take anything of it. Al Araj narrated from Abu Huraira that the Prophet peace be upon him said the same but he said, it, Euphrates, will uncover a mountain of gold under it. Narrated by Haritha bin Wab. I heard Allah's messenger peace be upon him saying, give in charity because there will come a time on the people when a person will go out with his alms from place to place but will not find anybody to accept it. Narrated by Abu Huraira. Allah's Messenger peace be upon him said, The hour will not be established, 1, till two big groups fight each other whereupon there will be a great number of casualties on both sides and they will be following one and the same religious doctrine, 2, till about 30 Dajjals, liars, appear, and each one of them will claim that he is Allah's Messenger peace be upon him, 3, till the religious knowledge is taken away, by the death of religious scholars, 4, earthquakes will increase in number, 5, time will pass quickly, 6, afflictions will appear, 7, al harje means killing, will increase, 8, till wealth will be in abundance, so abundant that a wealthy person will worry lest nobody should accept his zakat, and whenever he will present it to someone, that person, to whom it will be offered, will say, I am not in need of it, 9, till the people compete with one another in constructing high buildings, 10, 
till a man when passing by a grave of someone will say, Would that I were. In his place, 11, and till the sun rises from the west. So when the sun will rise and the people will see it, rising from the west, they will all believe, embrace Islam, but that will be the time when, as Allah said, no good will it do to a soul to believe then, if it believed not before, nor earned good, by deeds of righteousness, through its faith. Surah 6 verse 158, And the hour will be established while two men spreading a garment in front of them but they will not be able to sell it, nor fold it up, and the hour will be established when a man has milked his she-camel and has taken away the milk but he will not be able to drink it, and the hour will be established before a man repairing a tank, for his livestock, is able to water his animals in it, and the hour will be established when a person has raised a morsel of food to his mouth, but will not be able to eat it. Narrated by al Mughira bin Shuba. Nobody asked the Prophet peace be upon him as many questions as I asked regarding Ad-Dajjal. The Prophet peace be upon him said to me, what worries you about him? I said, because the people say that he will have a mountain of bread and a river of water with him, means he will have abundance of food and water, the Prophet peace be upon him said, nay, he is too mean to be allowed such a thing by Allah, but it is only to test mankind whether they believe in Allah or in Ad-Dajjal. Narrated by Ibn Umar may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet peace be upon him said, about Ad-Dajjal, that he is one-eyed, his right eye is as if a protruding out grape. Narrated by Anas ben Malik. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Ad-Dajjal will come and encamp at a place close to Medina and then Medina will shake thrice whereupon every Kafir, disbeliever, and hypocrite will go out of Medina towards him. Narrated by Abu Bakra. The Prophet peace be upon him said, the terror caused by al masih ad-Dajjal will not enter Medina and at that time Medina will have seven gates and there will be two angels at each gate, guarding them. Narrated by Abu Bakra The Prophet peace be upon him said, The terror caused by al masih ad-Dajjal will not enter Medina and at that time Medina will have seven gates and there will be two angels at each gate, guarding them. Narrated by Abdullah ben Umar. Allah's messenger peace be upon him stood up amongst the people and then praised and glorified Allah as he deserved and then he mentioned Ad-Dajjal, saying, I warn you of him, and there was no prophet but warned his followers of him, but I will tell you something about him which no prophet has told his followers, Ad-Dajjal is one-eyed whereas Allah is not. Narrated by Abdullah ben Umar. Allah's Messenger peace be upon him said. While I was sleeping, I saw myself, in a dream, performing to waff around the Kaaba. Behold, I saw a reddish white man with lank hair, and water was dropping from his head. I asked, Who is this? They replied, The son of Mary. Then I turned my face to see another man with a huge body, red complexion and curly hair and blind in one eye. His eye looked like a protruding out grape. They said to me, He is at Dajjal. The Prophet peace be upon him added, The man he resembled most is Ibn Kitan, a man from the tribe of Huza'i. Narrated by Aisha. I heard Allah's messenger peace be upon him in his prayer, seeking refuge with Allah from the afflictions of Ad Dajjal. Narrated by Hud Haifa. The Prophet peace be upon him said about Ad-Dajjal that he would have water and fire with him, what would seem to be, fire, would be cold water and, what would seem to be, water, would be fire. Narrated by Anas. The Prophet peace be upon him said, no prophet was sent but that he warned his followers against the one-eyed liar, Ad-Dajjal. Beware. He is blind in one eye, and your Lord is not so, and there will be written between his, Ad-Dajjal's, eyes the word Kafir, means disbeliever. 
This hadith is also quoted by Abu Huraira and Ibn Abbas. Narrated by Abu Sa'id. One day Allah's Messenger peace be upon him narrated to us a long narration about Ad-Dajjal and among the things he narrated to us, was, Ad-Dajjal will come, and he will be forbidden to enter the mountain passes of Medina. He will encamp in one of the salt areas neighboring Medina and there will appear to him a man who will be the best or one of the best of the people. He will say I testify that you are Ad-Dajjal whose story Allah's Messenger peace be upon him has told us. Ad-Dajjal will say, to his audience, Look, if I kill this man and then give him life, will you have any doubt about my claim? They will reply, No, then Ad-Dajjal will kill that man and then will make him alive. The man will say, By Allah, now I recognize you more than ever. Ad-Dajjal will then try to kill him, again, but he will not be given the power to do so. Narrated by Abu Huraira. Allah's Messenger peace be upon him said, There are angels at the mountain passes of Medina, so that, neither plague nor Ad-Dajjal can enter it. Narrated by Anas ben Malik. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Ad-Dajjal will come to Medina and find the angels guarding it. So Allah willing, neither Ad-Dajjal, nor plague will be able to come near it. Narrated by Zainab bint Yashir. That one day Allah's messenger peace be upon him entered upon her in a state of fear and said, None has the right to be worshipped but Allah. Woe to the Arabs from the great evil that has approached them. Today a hole has been opened in the dam of Gog and Magog like this. The Prophet peace be upon him made a circle with his index finger and thumb. Zainab bint Yashir added, I said, O oh Allah's Apostle! Shall we be destroyed though there will be righteous people among us? The Prophet peace be upon him said, Yes, if the number of evil persons increased. Narrated by Abu Huraira. The Prophet peace be upon him said, A hole has been opened in the dam of Gog and Magog. Wilhab, the sub-narrator, made the number 90, with his index finger and thumb.